I can take advantage of the time off with my redundancy to catch up on various personal projects, including finishing off my welding bench. And this is made from a big thick piece of sort of tread plate steel, which is upside down so all the treads are underneath. And this stuff, which we picked up at a local um, scrap metal place that lets you buy things. I've been TIG welding all these pieces together and bits of box steel down there as reinforcements and angle steel as the extra reinforcements and supports the shelf here. And I've drilled through this top plate and put these big M10 bolts through to mount on the vices with wing nuts. And you can also see where the um, top plate is bolted onto these little welded brackets which attach it to the um, underlying chassis. So it means these two nice vices are usable on top and because they're done with wing nuts they can be taken off so if I need the whole flat surface for anything it's available. This rather fancy one here was a gift from my in-laws and it's um, one of these ones that you can adjust so that it will rotate. I put it here because it's quite handy for cutting things an angle grinder if I can put things in there I can adjust them to the right angle and then cut rather than having to move myself around and get the angle grinding sparks in all different places. This is a beefier vice for doing beefier things, but the beefiest vice of all is, of course, this one. Now, this is an antique original blacksmith's leg vice. It's supposed to be a bit more securely mounted into the ground down there. Normally, you'd kind of basically embed it in concrete or something. When I'm more certain this is the correct place to put the welding bench, I'm probably going to drill a suitable hole in a large piece of steel and then bolt that as a plate to the floor. But anyway, you see I've constructed all these kind of brackets so that it can be mounted on and attaches itself there onto the welding bench. Um, yeah, the shelf underneath is very useful because I can move a whole lot of stuff that's otherwise lying around onto there and take it out of the way. As you can see, a general problem in the workshop is that I've got too much stuff sitting on the floor. It doesn't all fit up on the shelves. Um, I'm hoping to get hold of some recycled scaffolding boards from the excellent Bristolwood Recycling Project to put shelves in there. Have some space underneath where I can put things like the gas fire. And I'm going to properly melt mount the um, bench grinder on the shelves and maybe a few other useful things like that as well. Probably this vice too for doing other kind of cutting operations that can be done in a smaller space. I'd like to move the welder out because the power switch to the welder is right at the back and it's a pain reaching in there to switch it on and off so I'm thinking if it can sort of move more up to this side and move the gas puddles around here I should be able to get at the power switch there more easily with this out of the way. This is my old welding bench by the way. The reason I replaced this is that it's very wobbly and it's also curved. I don't know if that'll be visible in this but when I was making it I did far too much welding underneath to try and make it nice and strong. And of course this had the effect that the metal as it cools bends inwards this way and so it ended up with a nice curve on it so it was impossible to make anything flat. Everything flat I tried to weld together ended up slightly wonky because you know, one side was flat, the other side would be sticking up in the air. This welding bench does not have that problem. I have not welded to the underside of the top plate, it's bolted in place. And even if I did weld, well it'd take quite a lot of welding to distort this stuff which is a good 5mm or so thick. So anyway, there's going to be some nice shelves there. Let's get lots of stuff out of the way. A lot less junk lying around on the floor. I'm going to replace this little white bookcase with more shelving across there. I'm going to put shelves in down there. And big shelves in the corner there where I'm going to have sort of boxes with spare parts for the amazing computer chassis. Now this is my next project to finish this bye bye off. As you can see it's already got an enigmatic glowing neon light on it. It doesn't do much else at the moment. So you see there's a proper power inlet there which is all nicely plumbed in with this cable management. Inside is a UPS power distribution and here is a chassis plate which is going to have a motherboard mounted to it. So there's going to be a computer in there. This plate is drilled for 3.5 inch discs. I'm going to put an aluminium plate in there with cutouts to bring out all these sort of VGA and USB and Ethernet sockets. In here I'm going to be mounting a fan. Fan. And a um, flange spigot there so that the air inlet which brings in nice fresh air from the outside world that isn't full of nasty workshop dust air will be sucked in and blown down into here so that this container will contain air which is um, relatively clean and is at higher pressure than the outside environment so you know air will ooze out through these holes and through the proper air outlet at the bottom but it means it's very unlikely that contaminated air full of dust will get in 
These three holes here are going to sport some nice 10 millimeter red, green, blue LEDs. I've got little Arduino controlling them, which will also be connected to um, sort of temperature and humidity sensors on the air inlet and air outlet. And this will be hooked up to the computer inside so the computer can control these lights to sort of give us some of overall system status, load, whether anything's failed, that sort of thing, as well as being able to find out if it's um, air is in good condition. And I'm going to be keeping track of the humidity and temperature of air coming in and out of the system to make sure that the air it's getting in from the outside world isn't too close to the dew point because I don't want condensation occurring inside there and making everything rust. Now, I've already started work on the shelving to go down there because I've got a few scraps of scaffold board lying around which I've been cleaning up. There's two of them here and I've got a third one that still needs sanding. So yeah, that's going to be a bit of a prototype of scaffold board shelving I'm going to do. As you can see, it's a nice thick material there. Yeah, that's not going to bend in the middle too easily. I need to decide how I'm going to actually mount it to the wall, whether I'm going to use brackets or just sort of fix it all to a sheet of thinner wood and then screw the sheet of thinner wood to the back or something like that. We shall see. But yeah, hopefully with time, more and more junk will be out of the way. I can sort out this absolutely awful electrical wiring. I don't know if you can see how wonderful the um, wiring down to that um, socket is there. Because I have these nice cable trays in the ceiling, these ones here are for network cabling, but this down the middle is reserved for putting power cables on. So I'm going to reroute the lighting cable onto there, replace this nasty stick out light fitting with probably some kind of flat, long LED strip light. Same at the other end. And then abominations such as this loose double gang socket just hanging from hooks and things can all be sorted out. I'm not sure exactly where I want sockets for everything yet, but yeah, once I put the shelving on, I'll find a nice place to put sockets in. So that's the plan. Workshop is slowly coming together. My little nerd cave. Thank you for listening.